we got massive news this week. Um, we obviously talked about the potential. Last week we were talking about interviewing Frank Vogel, interviewing Nick Nurse, and now we are officially have gone from a doctor to a nurse. Now we can actually say it confirmed. Um, so, and, and, you know, he had the introductory press conference today. He said some good stuff. Um, but my, my question to you guys, I, I have two multiple questions actually with the, uh, the whole nurse hiring, but what do you think uh, Nick Nurse's biggest challenge is going to be with this, with this team? Um, and what player do you think this hiring impacts the most with Nick Nurse coming to town? You know, it's kind of hard because, like we said before, we don't know about James. I mean, the biggest challenge is going to be getting past the second round. That's the biggest challenge. I mean, that's why Doc Rivers isn't here. That's why Brett Brown isn't here. That's, <laughs> those are the main reasons why. Um, yeah. So you can do you can be as great as you want to be. If we still end up in the same place, then what do we accomplish? So I, that is, you know, in itself an issue. Um, but I think the biggest challenge altogether is putting together an offense where your leading scorer and your your best player, dominant player, is a seven foot guy. I haven't done. That. I haven't seen him do that. So I think that'll be his biggest challenge is building the offense around Joel and his, his skill set. Um, who I think it'll impact, I mean, I would say James, but I, I'm going to kind of stay away from that because I don't really know if his situation yet. So, um, if James, so if James did resign, it would be James. Yeah, because if he's building the offense around Joel, how would that look for James? Yep. Um. But being that he's, we don't really know, so I kind of go with somebody else. Um, I would say Tobias. Um, and the reason why I say that is because how how does he fit in what you're building for Joel? And he is going to be a free agent. He's playing for a contract. And, and how is that going to look for him? And, like, you know, are we going to play him and then not trade him, play him in, you know, contract girl or, like, I just think the, you know, do a coach come in and be like, hey, if he's not going to be here, do I pull back from him? We don't know. So, a lot, it's, it's a lot more to be resolved, but. Now, one of the things he, he talked about, um, not this one, but I've heard previously, was um, the second thing that he listed on um, coaching is uh, uh, improving. Um, players value in the marketplace so Tobias would definitely be someone that between those two choices of pull back or play more it sounds like he'd play him more in order to boost his value yeah um I can't I can't hear you Eric say it again I had my sons um yelling oh my screen. god no, I, I was saying um, uh, Nurse, lo uh, the second thing besides uh, getting everyone to play team ball that he, he talked about a few days ago or a clip I saw a couple days ago was um, he likes um, uh, boosting players' value on the marketplace. That, that's what he loves doing. He's like getting the best out of them so they could be worth the most on the on the marketplace. So between pulling back or playing Tobias more, if we were going to deal him or at any point, I, I would assume he would lean toward just – getting the best out of him, getting the most out of him so he could trade him for the most. I understand that, but how? Yeah, no, no, yeah, exactly. That's what we've been, you know, we've been here, you know, a little longer than him, even though we're, on, we're, hands, we're not hands on like that. But we've been here a while, and, and incorporating Tobias has been an issue. And mm -hmm. I'm saying now you add the fact of him being a free agent. Yeah. It's funny you said getting past the second round. That was one thing he mentioned in the press conference today that he's going to attack that head on. He said you just got to you just got to go ahead and attack that the fact that this team hasn't gone past the second round. That's you know something he had to deal with in Toronto where there was you know certain guys couldn't play you know couldn't get past a certain round of the playoffs and you know they they were able to do that. Um, I don't know who who's referring to with that, but um, but yeah, he said you know they they they, they have to attack that head on because that, that is a a big goal, obviously. <laughs> They did it with Kawhi. Did they do it at any other time after that? No. 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 
But, I mean, you know, you need a superstar, right? Butler's a superstar. You need Jimmy Butler a superstar? Or all-star? I'd say, I'd say Jimmy Butler's top 15 player in the league, top 20 player in the league. Is he a superstar? You're asking me right now? Yes. He's like, he looks like one of the best players in the league right now. I mean, so he's a superstar. Yeah. So he's on the same level as LeBron James and Steph Curry. He's on the same level as Kawhi. I didn't say he was a superstar. I said it. So he's on the same level as LeBron James, Steph Curry, Giannis, the MVPs. He's on the same level as those guys? Currently, yes. No, but you're talking you, from a, from a you go and say he's a superstar. Yeah, what do you mean? Just because you in the finals don't make you a superstar. It's just make you a good, really good player. I agree. He carried his team to the finals. Steph Curry could carry his team. Like, you, got, you got guys that are really playing well. They're playing well. They're not all stars. That's my point. So what makes him a superstar and them regular players? Because they go as he goes. I mean, what do you mean? He, well, I mean, what, well, you want us to go pull up his playoff averages? What are they, like 25, 8, and like 7? I mean. So Anthony Davis is a superstar. I judge it from going our team going against the Celtics and Brown shutting down Harden. So, and they so if you get numbers and you win, against you Butler. Butler. So if you get numbers and you win, you're a superstar. But if you get numbers and you lose, are you not? Because LeBron James just put up great numbers and then got swept, so he's not a superstar anymore. That well, those come with little 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 asterisks, don't they? Like they say about Embiid, a superstar comes up short when it matters. That's what you're called. I'm not saying Jimmy's a really really good player. I'm just saying there has to be a difference between a superstar and like everybody can't be superstars, and that's fine. That's that's really fine. A superstar to me. Is different than an all star. A superstar what, what sells. A superstar. A superstar sells tickets. He, he sells tickets. He has. Everybody's gonna watch. We're not gonna have a situation where. Well, we don't know if they're gonna watch. Superstar I, sells all that. That's well, why. It's not a lot of, that's why, in my opinion, it's not a lot of them. So I, I don't mean, use. You don't hear. You don't hear me say, "Guys, superstar." You just hear me say all star, really good player. You never really hear me say superstar very often. I don't think the Lakers' ratings of the last championship did that well. I think that that, that was actually very low ratings. So I don't what think they do in, in, in the bubble? Yeah. Man, the bubble ratings for <laughs> anybody, man. It was only on TV. What are you no, talking about the TV? bubble ratings, man? There was no shows, no movies, on, no sports. No, 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 uh, no, no, no. The, the NFL was going on during uh, during the bubble ah. championship. Yeah, I remember we were switching back and forth to a Sunday night game. You can't talk about the bubble. It was full during football season, man. Yeah. <laughs> there was hardly anything on TV, and, and they still couldn't get rated during football season. Oh, football season. A Tuesday night is football a football game? Yes, yes. There, there were some people, games that overlap with Sunday night football. Schedule and summer schedule were different, yes. There's nothing else on in the summer. Yes, you're right. It's different, man. You can't compare it to a bubble season. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 if you're a superstar, get ratings. If you're in the in finals, and right? Who, who was the Lakers playing that year? I, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're playing okay. another superstar according to you. <laughs> hey, hey, I think Butler's doing more commercials than LeBron is nowadays. So we're talking about marketability. Hey, LeBron has the choice, the chance, the choice to be selective in this. Jimmy's a really, really good player. I think Jimmy's like, more likable than LeBron is. No, I'm just saying he's a really, really good player. But it has to be a difference between some of these guys. It has to be a difference. Like everybody can't be superstars. Why well, didn't say everyone? Come on, I mean, Jimmy I'm just saying, saying, that's, I'm Jimmy going to the I'm finals what Jimmy, three times. Are you? I just don't think it's idea. a lot. I just like super superstars. I just don't think it's a lot of them. I think, I think getting Embiid to buy in will be very important. Um, not only for how far our team goes, but for other players to see that as well. Um, now, I think if, from what I've heard, from what I've read, um, he's not afraid of, t- of attacking his All Star players. He comes at them. We haven't really had a coach do that with Joel. Every coach we've had is very, very, very kid gloves with him. And you Fred think Brown. that he's going to come in and he's going to do something different? 
Apparently, he did it with Kawhi. He did, he did it with, with Kawhi. It was very direct. Says who? Um, Why said it? A lot of a lot of beat writers. I think. I think, I think I know Nurse said it, but I think Lowry also said it as well. That he's got a very direct way of speaking to his players. No, he called him. He called Lowry flat out after one game, and like they had a man to man talk. Apparently. And we don't think Doc Rivers did that with with, with Joel. We just, I'm saying, but didn't they just say that James had a problem with with, with James with with James? I don't no, know how much. No, no, it, we didn't say that it was just James. It was James had a problem with it. That well, yeah. say, I'm just saying, but that doesn't mean that he didn't do it to anybody else. That tells me he did it to everybody else, and only one guy had a problem with it. Mm. Not everyone has the extracurricular activities that James has, though. I'm so. just saying. So. So now we're going to come in here and Nick Nurse is going to tell James what to do? Well, I said Joel. <laughs> James, my, my second one is that's why I didn't want, But that's what I'm saying. That's why I didn't want to talk about James because I'm like, okay, we got – ain't no need to go there unless we know he's coming back. <laughs> my other part was because I had one with James or with not, without James. Um, how is he – if James does resign, how is he going to tackle that? Because – if James doesn't like your style or what you're doing, he can make things very uncomfortable. So, I, I nurse said yeah, they talk. I, I get what you're saying, but I just don't think many coaches are firm right now. They, they don't even allow you to coach like that anymore. It's just, I, I don't think the league I, is like that anymore. I heard he was a stickler too, but when I heard these stories, I was like, "Damn, I don't, I don't." I don't he called Kawhi. I don't Kawhi, believe. I don't believe, I don't believe that the league is. I don't believe. From everything that I've seen from the league, I do not see um, – you're basically saying he's like Larry Brown. I, I'm telling you, they, they aren't doing that. Yeah. I, I, I don't believe that. I don't believe I don't believe that that's the case. Well, apparently – no, but apparently he did – he ruffled – they had some problems this year because he was he'll, – he'll, I mean, even if you're high paid, he'll bench you, he'll cut your minutes. Like, apparently he's cutthroat. Yeah, we'll Philly's see. different, though. Philly, yeah, Philly's we'll, different, fellas. Yeah. All right. We're, we're going to see it. We're going to see if that happens because, you know, like we said a minute ago, if you can't get the best out of Tobias, then I guess Tobias's minutes will come down then. I, I don't know. We'll see. I guess we'll you can do it to Tobias. You can't do that to Joel. And if James come back, you're not going to do it to James. If you do that, the culture and the team is gone. Because if you lose those guys, well, we just got to. That's go. why, yeah, I think his biggest challenge will be keeping the same. But then if you don't do it to those guys, you're going to lose the respect of everybody else. Exactly. Yep. And this is a team that maybe they went past the second round, but they've won without him. Yep. So yep. it's not like they come in and he's the savior and be like, hey, y'all, this team hasn't won. This team just hadn't got past the second round. They just went one game away from, from going. Had two, two chances to go. <laughs> two of the things that he preaches a lot, doesn't like stagnation, wants the ball, wants team ball. Uh, and how you going to do that with Joel? How you know James? Either one of them, really. He also said he's not a fan of just throwing the ball to your biggest player and pounding down 100 times a game either. So that's also not very uh, supportive of so he's, Joel. He's, so he's saying I'm not a fan of the, the best player that's averaged 33 points a game. I'm not a fan of giving him the ball down where he has an advantage. That's what he's saying? That's what you're saying he's saying? Um, no, not, not exactly quite like that, that though, huh? No, no, not exactly like that. I think he's. I think it's what more about – What does the ball to, to him means then? That's just that can't just be your offense. Just figure it out. Give it to Joel and figure it out. Can't be your offense. I think is what I took from it. So if we we come down and we run a There's set, gotta movement. There's got to be come down. We and Joel runs into a pick and roll. We got a back screen, cross screen, throw the ball to him. Or we come down. James dribble to a side. Joel post up. We throw it to him. Guess what we doing? Throwing him the ball. Both times. I'm just saying both ways. You dribble down, you throw in the ball, or you come down, you got a cross screen, back pick, back screen, swing it, throw it down. Guess what you're still doing? Throwing him the ball. Mm -hmm. Problem is, when a team's game plan him well, Joel, that is, we don't have an answer for that. So there's got to be something else. We have to have more than that offense and just getting Joel the yeah, ball. I understand, I understand that, but what I'm saying is That's the, reason why we lost. the game of the NBA is about making the scoring the basketball easily. And you, that's why the better players are the best players because that's what they do the best. They put the ball in the basket the best. 
Yeah. So when exactly. the defense makes an adjustment to that, you have different ways to counter that. But Absolutely. Joel has to counter it by being able to score and dominate. Then when they have some, they defend him a certain way, being able to have a counter to that. Yep. And when they double, you being able to move the ball quickly and swiftly to be able to attack the double. That's what it's all about, no matter where Joel catches the ball. That's where it's about. So I don't think you can just come in and say, well, I don't think you can just pound the ball, this and that, to Joel. So what are we going to do, throw it to him in the three-point line? The object is to win the game. The best way to win the game is to have your best player have the ball the majority of the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we've, we've seen the team throw it to him at the free throw line and throw him at the three-point line, and we hadn't got past the second round. Yep. So to hear a coach say, I don't like – Hopefully he didn't say that, but there may, maybe he said that in the past. But to say that right now, I don't like throwing the ball. A guy that's seven foot that has an advantage every game, the ball down low, I don't understand how you can say that going in without even taking a look at how that looks. He's not stupid either. So he's game planned against us, and he sees what he's seen what Joel can do against you and how they can break you down. I just think he wants more than just that. And we need what, that. What was the exact quote? Because I, I watched the press conference. I didn't, I didn't hear him. No, no, it wasn't from that press conference. Oh. It was just a general saying, comment. You didn't say that now. No, 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 no. Come in with any kind of way you can play with this team until you're in there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he talked about doing a lot. I mean, he's known for doing a lot of testing out a lot of new things and drawing up different schemes throughout the game and stuff. So he said he's prepared. He hopes the team is prepared to, you know, do things they haven't done before. And, you know, he says a lot, a lot of it's a collaborative effort. He goes so that he'll be working with the guys to do a little, you know, a little bit of different things they've never done before. And he said he'll also be throwing stuff at Joel B, which he thought was successful against Embiid in the past, but he tried against Embiid, and they're going to be trying to to work out ways to beat that, to beat the type of defenses that he threw out Embiid and stuff. So, I mean, a lot of stuff was encouraging. He also talked about, I think someone asked him, you see Jokic in, in the championship, he plays more a facilitator-type role. Do you think Embiid can kind of uh, add that to his arsenal? And he thinks he said, yes, I think he can add some of that to his arsenal. Okay. Now, he was great in the uh... – Great in the presser. He, he handled he handled Howard Eskin pretty well, so I think it's a f- good first test of Philadelphia, Eric. <laughs> Howard, I like Howard, man. He asked him a very pointed you know, question. A lot of people like me that like Howard, but I like Howard. Uh, you know, he's one of those guys. Uh, sometimes he says stuff like, "Okay, I, I, yeah, I, I Howard I, says some crazy stuff," but Howard showed up. Yeah, I see. I know Howard. I seen his face. Mm-hmm. I know who he is. He won one of those guys that says something that I never met before, never seen that a practice, never seen that a game, ever. But you got every, a lot to say. That's I'm just saying that's the difference with how I was showed up. Mm-hmm. You had something to say to him, go over and say it. Yeah. He showed up. That's a, that's a Philly OG right there. Um he 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 said uh his question to uh to nurse is pretty pointed. Uh, he asked, uh, "Do you want James Harden um, in Philadelphia?" And then he started asking. He started like, answering the question, and he cut him off. He goes, "Do you want James Harden in Philadelphia?" And he goes, "I, you know, he's got a decision to make, but I'd love to have James Harden." So that's Howard for you. We getting you on the record, buddy. <laughs> we'll need all that talk. Just yes or no. And they've already spoken to uh, Nurse and Harden. I didn't think that conversation went. Nurse, Nurse and Harden. Harden. They already spoke, apparently. He said before before he took the job, he he spoken with Harden. Yeah, I mean, James. James, I'm good, man. But James gonna make the decision that's best for James. Yeah, yeah. That's what free agency is. Yep. So it don't matter who the coach is. When I got traded from Philly to Cleveland, I had, the coach that came to Philly told me how what he what he had planned for me. Then a couple of months later, I, I never talked to him again, and I was traded. Was that Jim O'Brien? Yeah. We had a conversation. He was telling me what he wanted me to do and how he going to use me, this and that. And that was the only time we talked. I was gone the next month. Dang. So they're just telling you how it go. Like, so, okay, we say all this stuff now. We won't know next week's going to be different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably why Eskin was pushing so hard for that the answer. <laughs> he, he, won, he won it on record. Mm-hmm. He, he also said he wants to. You want to know how you feel, how you really feel. So tell us how you feel, get it on the record, and then we move on from there. 